the Secretary for Decarbonization and Resilience. And yes, we are being recorded this evening. Um, so in my role within the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, I'm responsible for both um, decreasing our greenhouse gas emissions so that we can stave off the worst impacts of climate change, but also building our resilience so that we can adapt to the impacts of climate change that are already happening. And this is so particularly important along our coast, which is why I'm pleased to welcome you to tonight's public meeting for the Resilient Coast Initiative. I'm so pleased to see so many of you here today, this evening, because you care about the coast and the people who live, work, and spend time there. And I'm grateful, again, that you are taking time to be part of this important conversation because we have some really important questions that we want to be discussing with you this evening. So developing a coordinated coastwide strategy to build resilience to coastal climate impacts of flooding, erosion, and the associated effects that we are now experiencing on a regular basis is of critical importance for the Commonwealth. And it's identified as a high priority action in resilient mass, which is the statewide hazard mitigation and climate adaptation plan that was adopted by Governor Healy and approved by the Federal Emergency Management Agency last fall. Importantly, it is a top priority for the Healy Driscoll administration. And this meeting is about building a foundation for this strategy that we are gonna to build together. So Resilient Coast underscores several elements of the Healy Driscoll administration's commitment to climate action. It's grounded in the science. It's focused on partnerships. No single property or community can build coastal resilience alone. Third, it is informed by our work with communities, businesses, organizations, research partners, and residents. That's you who are experiencing climate change and envisioning a resilient future. Finally, it's about catalyzing action. This is not a strategy that is going to sit on a shelf. Right now, we are planning the work of, resili of coastal resilience so that then we can work the plan. And we appreciate your partnership in all stages of this effort. So tonight we're gonna offer you a brief introduction to the Resilient Coast Initiative, and then we're gonna seek your input on our shared vision and what that initiative should achieve. At this meeting, we are interested in hearing and gathering clear and specific ideas of what a resilient coast means to you. This will inform which strategies applied to different areas and contexts along the coast will help us to achieve our vision and evaluate our progress towards our goals. This is why we need your input and perspectives today, and we thank you in advance for sharing them with us. So let me turn it over um, to Tyler again to just talk a little bit about what the plan, how it's shaped and what it will do. Thanks, Elizabeth. Good morning, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name again is Tyler Solo, and I'm the Acting Director for the Office of Coastal Zone Management within the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. CZM is the lead on coastal and ocean topics for EEA, and the Resilient Coast Initiative for the Commonwealth that was kicked off last year on November 28th by the Governor in Beverly. We are excited to launch this important work with coastal stakeholders, including those of you with us today, and many others who represent academic, business, environmental, municipal, environmental justice, and other interests who have been thinking critically about coastal resilience in Massachusetts. First, we wanna set the stage and lay the groundwork for why the Resilient Coast Initiative is so important. We've seen impacts relating to climate change for many years now. Led by EEA, the December 2022 Massachusetts Climate Assessment was a statewide analysis that detailed how Massachusetts people, environments, and infrastructure may be affected by climate change and related hazards through the end of the century. Specifically, relevant to the work before us now, it encapsulated our current knowledge about how climate change is affecting our coastal areas with some key findings. First, coastal impacts on people and ecosystems are increasing due to accelerating sea level rise and changing coastal storms. Extreme storms cause delays in emergency response time due to flooding of roads, potentially leading to losses of life. Storm surge and coastal erosion are causing damage to coastal property and infrastructure. And sea level rise leads to coastal habitat shifts and loss of salt marshes and beaches. Next slide, please. Building on the work of the Massachusetts Climate Assessment, in September of last year, the Commonwealth released the Resilient Mass Plan, which is the five-year update to the 2018 State Hazard Mitigation and Climate Adaptation Plan. 
Resilient Mass laid out a suite of actions for state agencies to undertake to advance resilience statewide and ensure the Commonwealth is prepared to withstand, rapidly recover from, adapt to, and mitigate natural hazard events. One of the 142 named actions in the plan was for CZM to develop a coordinated, equitable, and effective coastal resilience strategy in partnership with coastal municipalities and other coastal stakeholders like you. Next slide. Now I'd like to give an overview of the key components of the Resilient Coasts Plan. The lead for this initiative will be EEA, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, and CZM, the Office of Coastal Zone Management. And the goal and purpose of Resilient Coasts is to guide state and local coastal resiliency planning and management actions. And in terms of process, we'll be working from now until June 30th with consulting support to describe vision, goals, metrics for Resilient Coast, including economy, infrastructure, flood protection, environmental justice, and natural and cultural resources. Engage with stakeholders like you, which is a critical component of this effort. Delineate geographic zones of climate vulnerability or coastal resilience districts. Evaluate new and current strategies and how they could be applied to different districts across the coast. Identify climate resilient development standards and best practices for coastal adaptation and develop recommendations and a report to guide management of vulnerable areas at the state and local levels. Throughout this process, there will be many levels of stakeholder engagement and coordination, including five meetings of the internal agency working group, five meetings of the external task force, meetings with community liaisons, and additionally, we'll have public meetings like this one, public surveys, which are forthcoming, and opportunities for focus groups and interviews on specific topics. Next slide, please. As mentioned, robust stakeholder and expert engagement is a key tenant and critical component of the Resilient Coast Initiative. And engagement and leveraging expertise that you and others have developed will help make sure this work is a success. On this graphic, you'll see the project timeline. Oh, so, yeah, thanks. <laughs> On this graphic, you'll see the project timeline across the top in gray and an orange line, which indicates where we are in that timeline. Below the timeline are two sets of boxes. The darker blue boxes lay out the steps in the technical process associated with the project, and the lighter blue boxes lay out the engagement process. And there are three waves of engagement, each associated with different steps in the technical process. And the vertical arrows show how the technical and engagement processes are designed to inform each other. Next slide. This plan will be developed broadly through this three-step process. First, soliciting and gathering input on existing strategies, including an assessment of existing strategies, what to amplify, what's missing, and what new strategies could be developed. Second, analyze and evaluate these strategies against the stated goals and indicators of the initiative. And finally, incorporating the strategies, both those existing and those amplified or new, into a new coastwide framework that will also make recommendations for new strategies. I'm now gonna hand it over to Nasser from Woods Hole Group, who's also part of the consultant team helping with the plan to talk more about coastal resilience districts. Thank you. Um, as part of this project, areas of Massachusetts that are vulnerable to coastal flooding and erosion will be mapped and categorized into different types of coastal resilience districts. Um, each type of coastal resilience district will have different landscape characteristics and climate hazards that inform which types of strategies should be applied. Uh, we chose these three areas shown here in Salem, Fairhaven, and Barnstable to give you a sense of some different types of coastal regions that we expect to find across the coast, but these are just examples. Next slide. We'll be using primary districting factors shown here to define the boundaries between districts and secondary factors to flag additional characteristics that could modify recommendations and prioritization. Um, so we have natural resources, including existing coastal wetlands and fu potential future coastal wetlands, uh, coastal erosion from shoreline change and coastal bank loss, uh, considering also where seawalls and other coastal structures are in place, uh, land use and economy, indicating the density of development, and coastal flooding in the near term and long term. In terms of these secondary factors, we are looking at the state-defined criteria for environmental justice populations, and also looking at um, inventoried assets in the state's historic and cultural resources information. Um, these factors are based on publicly available data that's updated, which will allow these districts to be updated over time as new data becomes available. Next slide, please. 
So at a high level, you can see how the three areas we showed earlier differ in terms of these factors. The expectation is that while some strategies may be common across the entire coast, there will be different resilient strategies that apply to different district types. Uh, and in these examples, uh, that's been borne out in, in practice. So the example from Salem received a CZM grant for designing flood control infrastructure to protect environmental justice uh, neighborhoods and affordable housing. Um, the uh, example from Fairhaven received an EEA grant to acquire land for public access, and it is also an area of potential future marsh migration. And in the example from Barnstable, CZM provided a grant to design a managed retreat project for the beach parking lot uh, along with na nature-based restoration. So the goal of this plan is to bring some uh, this consistency and prioritization to implementation of policies, fundings, and other strategies uh, to the rest of the coast. Next slide. Um, in terms of the geographic scope of this project, these districts are going to be uh, focused only on the areas that are vulnerable to coastal flooding and erosion. Um, you can see the 78 uh, CZM communities are shown in these maps as being um, exposed in the 2030 timeframe based on the Massachusetts Coast Flood Risk Model, which is the basis for state planning on coastal uh, resilience currently. And as we move to 2070, the next slide, please, you can see that there are potentially additional communities that will be uh, vulnerable, exposed in the long in the longer term um, as sea level rise continues. And that includes uh, communities along uh, major river basins, um, such as uh, the Merrimack um, in the North uh, Shore, um, the Charles and Mystic around Boston Harbor, and uh, the Taunton River and others on the South Coast. Um, so first, before we jump into sort of an overview of the goals that have been put forward, um, as sort of you know the guiding the guiding stars for this project, we want to do a little bit of getting on the same page for terms, um, because resilience is a word that has shown up many times already and and will continue to be using. And so, what does coastal resilience mean? Um, and there are you know some common definitions of what resilience means, and here's how we're understanding it for this project, which is the ability to prepare for, recover from, and adapt to increased coastal flooding coastal erosion and associated impacts. Um, and so you can imagine that when you're thinking about preparation, recovery, adaptation, there's a whole lot of, you know, sort of a, a broad time scale that's encompassed there of things that happened before uh, impacts are felt, uh, planning for the future, thinking about, you know, development, redevelopment, um, thinking about how people are equipped with information to just be making the best decisions that they can, et cetera. Um, so we just wanted to put that up front before we started talking about the goals that'll reference that term. So based on um, the conversations and the feedback that we have heard from Massachusetts stakeholders to date through the climate change assessment and resilient mass that Tyler spoke about, this is what we understand to be the critical goals for resilient coasts to advance. And I'll just read through them right now. First is to improve human health and safety. Second is to protect and enhance the value of natural and cultural resources. Third, increase the resiliency of built infrastructure functions. Four, strengthen the coastal economy. Five, advance equity and environmental justice. And six, support the capacity of coastal communities. And so we hope that these goals are reflective of what you would consider important to make the coast more resilient, but we wanna spend some time talking with you about what it means to really work towards each of those goals um, and getting a little bit more specific so that we have a way as Under Secretary Cooper said to sort of measure our progress as we work towards them in the near and long term. Um, so we're gonna be moving to breakout groups in a couple of moments. And what we wanna hear from you is really what should the strategies that will make up the guts of this Resilient Coasts plan achieve? And how will we be measuring our progress towards these goals? And one key technical task that you saw laid out in that timeline Tyler shared is the development of indicators to, again, gauge progress towards those goals, and then metrics that include you know, data that we can really track and measure so that we know we're kind of going in the right direction at any point. And so your feedback will help us uh, undertake that evaluation exercise. So in a moment, you're all going to be moved into facilitated breakout groups. 
And we have some first ideas for indicators to gauge progress towards each of those goals. And we'll share them with you. And we want your reaction to those. But then we also want to hear just your additional thoughts of what else we need to be thinking about for those indicators or other factors that haven't been named that should be associated with each of those goals.